What is up, everybody? This is Marshall Lee of DonkeyJawProjects.com, and today we're going to talk about following your calling. Um, and do you have the guts to do it? <laughs> and not only that, we're going to have um, a we, we have a special guest here, one that has we've been friends for a long time, but for some reason, the only time I've ever had him on my channel, it was for a podcast. And uh, it's Jeff Lafferty. How you doing, man, today? Hey, Marshall. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, anytime, man. Um, and where can people find you, Jeff? Oh, well, I still have my website, jefflafferty.net, and my YouTube is is just Jeff Lafferty. So if you search Jeff Lafferty, you find me on YouTube. So awesome. those are my two main places I hang out. Sweet. And uh, there's definitely a link below already um, for Jeff's um youtube channel and if you put a question um in the chat we'll try to get to it but um as you guys know during this kind of early bird art cast thing that i do um i kind of have limited time and i have to end up going to work so you know we'll do what our best but yeah feel free to put stuff down below and we'll see what we can do but um first of all i wanted to um you know kind of almost a response to a kind of a typical message that I see on your YouTube, Jeff, um, but also one you, you've hit on a lot to, um, recently, too, is just kind of this idea of, like, following your calling. And, and um, you know, so some people might not think of it as calling. I, I personally do. Um, it, I think that's a little bit, you know, it ha it's, it's a little bit connected to, like, my faith. I know you've talked about um, – you know, having a little bit of, you know, a faith or, or whatever, like you believe in God and stuff, you don't get into it too much. Um, but I'm just curious, like, um, do you think of it that way? Like you're, you're following a calling or do you feel like, you know, it's just kind of what you do? What do you, how do you feel um, with that kind of thing with your art and stuff? Um, I mean, I, I am, you know, religious in my own way. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't want to sound arrogant, but yeah, I, I think I, I do. I do feel like I was born to be an artist mm -hmm. and, you know, that, that I just have to do it. And, and like you said, you're following, you know, what you're supposed to do now, you know, like it, when I, I don't know why, though, you know, it doesn't really make much sense because I, I'm not really successful at it or anything. So it's kind of like I definitely question it uh, right. a lot. Of like why 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 in the hell did I go this path and things like that? But um, yeah, I mean, I, I I do I do think that way. But you know, I, I think there's probably a whole bunch of people that would like look at that and go like, oh, you know, you might have been born a shoemaker. How you know what you were, you know, supposed to be doing? So mm, yeah, anyway. yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's a, that's a good point, and it is easy to kind of second guess a little bit. But I think um, I think whether you make money at it or not, or do, you know, whatever you measure success by, um, I don't know. It's, it's almost like it's something in your bones, you know, and, and whether you also, whether, you know, I'm not trying to bring like this crazy religion angle to it, but I'm, you know, if you think of it that way or not, it's, it's, um, you know, there, there's something to like this idea of a calling. There's something to this, idea that um you know there's a certain way that you're kind of bent towards and and it's almost like something you can't really even get away from like even if you aren't quote unquote successful you still kind of have to do it you know in some capacity um and you know that's that's at least how i feel like even if every time i've ever tried to stop doing some of these things i just it, it only takes a couple of days before i'm starting to think of ideas and get you know need to do it yeah. again um, have you have you ever stopped for like any like length of time like a couple of years or something like that uh yeah i've stopped like doing art and and comics but um i've never stopped doing creative things it, if i wasn't doing that i was doing music so it's, oh, okay to me it still feels like the same thing really yeah um, yeah how about you yeah. have you kind of stopped no I no, I never have. I mean, I've definitely slowed down at times, you know, like when I was like working full time at you know different times of my life. But I still would like come home and draw my sketchbook for a couple hours every night. It's just it's just something I do. And I asked that because I one time I, I was talking to an artist and he he told me that he's like, I quit. I quit doing art for, you know, a couple years. 
and then it came back to it. And this was like a long time ago when I was a lot younger. And it just was so weird to me. I thought, you quit? I mean, how did you quit? And then what would you do with your time? <laughs> you know? But it's, it's yeah. kind of funny because that guy actually did that again. It, at some point, he, he kind of left it behind. And, and I don't know if he does art anymore. I don't ever see him anymore. But uh, I just it was just a weird thing. So I thought I'd ask, ask, ask you that. But I do think like music or something like that, that's almost like me doing animation. To me, that's not really quitting. That's just doing something different, you know? Yeah, yeah. And to, to be fair, even when I was doing that, I was still very much keeping a sketchbook and, and drawing all the time. I, I've never been able to quite stop that. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely a compelling thing. Um, comic book Black Belt Russ, he's often on the show. He says, uh, drawing and creating isn't a choice. You are driven by it the choice is whether to go to give into that drive or ignore it. And I, I totally agree. Yeah. Um, so Speaking of comic book black belt. Yeah. Ignore it at your peril. That's what I say. What's that? <laughs> ignore it at your peril. Yeah, really. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it's been often compared to being like a drug, especially like working on comics and stuff. Um, oh, man. I mean, it yeah. kind of is. Yeah. Like you said, at your peril. Um, comics is such a like a you know it, it, it's there's so much to learn in comics i think it's like i really think it's like one of the hardest of all the art forms you know like painting landscapes all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff you don't have to deal with near as much as you have to deal with with comics you have storytelling like perspective anatomy all this stuff yeah. you know that fits into comics it's just a, it's like a giant you know i don't know um i don't you know like a can of worms to open and it once you dive into that, it's hard to kind of go back to something easier. I think like when I was doing like fan art all the time, I, I felt that a lot. Like I, I wasn't pushing myself because all I was doing was just drawing. Like that was, you know, and like compared to like comics and stuff where it's like so much more shit than, you know, it's, it's just, it's just way harder. Yeah. There's, there's a ton to comics. I mean, that's why I've always said, you know, if, if you, um, if you want to learn, you know, how to draw or keep a sketchbook, you know, one of the best things you could do is make a comic because you have to do so many, you have to learn so many like fundamentals and, and techniques and, and, you know, perspective and just so many different things that you wouldn't necessarily do if you were just doodling in your sketchbook and stuff. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Uh, and, you know, I was thinking, a lot about kind of again some of the videos you've done and and um and in the past and, and you've kind of really it's it's funny that you you say like how how hard comics are and and yet you're doing comics you're doing an animation you've done a you know st you know a live action you know animation thing yeah, and awesome. um those those are all the hard ones you know but you did start off doing like sketch cards i even didn't realize it but even like your youtube channel you know like yeah. name has sketch card in it um can you, you want to talk a little bit about for people i mean most people who watch my videos must know you but um you know talk a little bit about how like your story on, as far as um how you kind of knew your calling uh but you know you, you decided to actually venture out and and not exactly risk at all, but there's definitely risk there in, in how you kind of ventured out to do this as a full-time kind of gig. Oh, you mean back when I, when I left my job and stuff, is that what you mean? Or Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. I know I talked about sketch cards, but I'm kind of more thinking about that. Well, no, sketch cards was the first time I left my job. I actually did it twice. Most people know about the second one because that's when I started the art cast and mm. did the majority of the videos. So people got to follow along. But I had actually went back to work uh, when I did it the second time. So, you know, some people like actually get mad when they hear the story because they feel like I was kind of cheating in a way or something because I had already done it once. So I kind of knew that I was going to be able to pull it off. So it was a little bit less scary at that time. But uh, <laughs> so Jeff seems to be joining us. But uh, <laughs> um yeah, the first time was, was the same thing, though. But the only thing difference was I was working for myself. I had a painting company at that time. And work had slowed down in the winter. I had, like, two people that had worked for me. And they just had this wild hair. I mean, they were married. So <laughs> this is part of the reason they both left at the same time. But they had this wild hair to move to Hawaii. 
So I had left, lost my, both my employees and it was like the winter time, all the work had slowed down and I had been selling sketch cards online. I like figured out you could sell stuff online. And so I had been selling sketch cards like all summer online and, and kind of building up this bank account of money. And so, uh, when it all slowed down and my employees left, I just thought, well, shoot, I just kind of tossed my cell phone in the trash and, uh, and just was like, I'm going to try this and see if I can make it work. And, and it was tough then too. I had about 2000 bucks saved up. And so it was a lot like the, the second time I did it. But um, I think I had about 300 bucks the second time I did it. I, I just walked off the job the second time I, was, I went back to work for somebody, but um I don't know. I, I mean, I had a plan, so it wasn't it wasn't as scary, I guess. Both times, I kind of felt like it was going to work. I didn't I didn't just jump out with like no plan. You know, I had been selling art online on eBay, and the sketch card thing was happening at that time, so it was kind of easy to do. And and you know, it's it's not that different than like the fan art thing. The fan art is th thing is still happening. If you want to sell art and you're you can pay, draw good fan art, you you can you can do it now. You know. Absolutely. Did that answer your question? I kind of got off on a tangent there. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It, it sounded good to me. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, and, and I think that's such an important part of this is, um, you know, I think you recognized your calling a long time ago. You already kind of, I mean, it, it it's so inbred um, and you, you know, you've, you've done it your whole life. Um, yeah. but then, you know, you learned how to make something of it, even in a kind of a small way. And, and the fact that you kind of had some money saved up, especially that first time, I mean, I yeah. personally, it's like, yes, you know, follow your calling. And maybe if you're, you know, a teenager or you're, you're, you're just striking out on your own, you know, maybe, and, and you're by yourself, you know, sure. Yeah. You can kind of maybe risk a little more, but when you maybe have a family, a wife, you know, a kid or something like that, um, it's a little bit tougher. Uh, but I think what you did is, is what I would recommend personally is, you know, make a plan and, and have some like evidence that you can do this already before you just jump out. Like you already were selling and all you needed to really do is have more time to do it. And, and um, kind of emphasize what you were doing more and you could make a living at it um, or right. close to it at least. And, and um, I guess the thing is though, is, is sometimes it will get sticky and, and you have to kind of fight for it, you know, and, and I know that you've talked a lot about that. Um, it, hasn't, oh, yeah. it hasn't been easy, correct? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it got sticky right off the bat on both, at both times, you know, because immediately, and I think the first time, because the first time I, you know, when I started doing the sketch cards, I, I kind of was in that mode that you see a lot of artists in that where I, I was like, you know, had this like perfection thing where everything had to be perfect all the time. And I wouldn't really finish much art, you know? Mm. And so when I started selling sketch cards, it's like, you know, it's part of the requirement. You got to, you got to finish the card to get it sold. And so it kind of threw me into this thing of like where I had to finish stuff. So it was a really good thing for me, but I still was fighting against that thing of just sort of like never finishing art and not, you know, I don't know. You know, it, it to me, I think it's it's like a perfection thing. It's just like I wanted to make it so perfect. So when things weren't going so perfect, I would abandon that piece and start another piece. You know, mm -hmm. and I see that with a lot of young guys online. You know, that are always practicing and never doing anything. They're just always planning, 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 practicing, 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 and never they never get to it. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But the but you know that. Anyway, like the sticky part, like you said, I mean, yeah, like, and especially when I left the first, the second time, I mean, you know, I just immediately ran out of money, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, at different times I, I did it again and again, but like that first year was just, was just brutal. You know, it was just like, I just remember so many times just being like at the end of the month and just not having a dime and then like something sells and you, oh, I can pay the rent, you know, and <laughs> And then you're back at it the next week and, you know, you're just doing it again and, and just pushing as hard as you can. But I also think like both times, like the thing I got out of that whole thing was like, you know, um, when you get your back up against the wall that, you know, it, it's kind of like 
it, I mean, it kind of goes back to the same thing I was saying about those other guys, you know, where they're practicing, 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 you know, if like somebody kind of put a gun to their head and said, all right, enough practicing, do page one of your comic today, get it done. And then tomorrow you're going to do page two, you know, they do it. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they do it. Anybody would do it, but it's like, they can't sort of do it on their own. They can't do it, you know, to the, their kind of specifications and all that kind of stuff. But that, you know, when you go out and, and you work and you're, you're on your own and you're trying to sell art on eBay, that was my main thing, which is, you know, you don't get that much off eBay. And especially you don't have like the commissions built up at that time. So you don't have any clients asking you for anything. Then, then your back's up against the wall. It is the kind of the gun to your head. Are you going to like lose the house or are you going to get this thing done? Are you going to like lose, you know, you're not going to eat this week or are you going to get this thing done? Well, you get the thing done, you know? Okay. So in, in a lot of ways, I think it's good. And and like you were saying earlier, too, about being younger, it's like if you're younger, man, and you're single, that, that's when I really wish I would have done it, you know, because it's like then you then you can fail. It's like who cares if you get kicked out of your apartment, you can move in with your parents, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, who cares if you lose your job? I mean, you can go get another one. You, get, you probably have a crappy job anyway. It's It's like the perfect time to take that chance and to fail or succeed. You know, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know. I, I I love that, and that's the kind of thing you know that you know when I see your channel, you always have kind of that like that drive, and 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 I uh, and and talking about like just kind of it's a, it's a struggle, but it's something you kind of have to do, um, and you know, yeah, I agree. Like, <laughs> as a if I I, I kind of wish I could go back to when I was younger and try this, you know, um, and I, I, I've stuck to the day job, you know, and yeah. I can't really, I haven't see to me, I feel like I could do it too, but I haven't built up the, the, you know, the fact that, you know, selling stuff, I've never gotten to a point where I was selling stuff in a consistent fashion. And I think you have to have some of those things in place before you make that, um, that leap. Uh, especially if you're in a position like you and I, where you know you, you you're married, you have other responsibilities. Um, you know, I don't have a kid, but th that would be a big one too. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's just really really um, interesting, and I think I, I definitely look to you and others who have struck out as an inspiration. It's something that I, I'd like to do, and I agree too that that. Um, you know, that kind of portrayal of, of people, you know, practicing and practicing and, and, you know, I get it. I, I I'm not uh, certainly not down on, on people for doing that. I need to do more practice myself. Um, you know, but same thing, you know, if you had a gun to your head, could you, could you make it happen? And I think a lot of times the result that would come from something like that would actually be very satisfactory, at least to an audience. Whether it's satisfactory to you or not, I don't know. Um, but that that imperfect that uh, perfectionism is is just a, a tough beast. Even even when you are striking out, and even when you are taking the risks and yeah. really working hard, it still creeps in somehow. Um, it is, and it it really made me realize like how much of a mental thing it is. It's not real. Hmm. I mean, it's that it's that inner critic that's just telling you, you can't do it or it's not good enough. And, you know, when I look back, especially over my sketch cards and stuff that I painted, I painted so many of them and they're, they're like so much better than I ever thought I could paint. You know what I mean? Not to like blow my own horn or whatever, but a lot of times I'll, you know, or not a lot of times, but every now and then I'll go and be looking through my website for something and I'll just see a piece in there. And it's just one you haven't looked at forever. And you'll be like, that's fucking good. You know? And hmm. it's not like I would have drawn that stuff if I wouldn't have been getting paid for it, you know? And I think that's the thing is like when you, when you're actually working on your comic and doing your comic, if you were doing that instead of working in your sketchbook or working on whatever, that's basically practice. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It, and, and when you, I, you know what I mean? Five years is going to come inevitably. So you're either going to have five years and a bunch of sketchbooks on your shelf, or you're going to have five years worth of comics and, and you know what I mean? They're not going to be bad comics. They're going to get better and better. And you're going to be in the same place. It doesn't matter if you're drawing your sketchbook and practice like hell, or if you're just drawing comics because that's practice too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> you're, you're speaking my language there. I mean, that's why one of my key kind of things I keep coming back to is kind of this idea of like, 
you know, publish or perish, you know, that, you know, keep right. putting stuff out. Um, and, you know, that's what I've been trying to do. And, and I've done it on a small scale, but I definitely uh, want to get kind of that, that, you know, full book out and stuff, hopefully uh, soon. That's like kind of a big goal this year, especially. Um, and, you know, so uh, that's, that kind of leads into the, the next thing is this, um, you know, not only is it important to follow your call, calling and, and see if you can make a career out of it, if, if that's one of your goals and stuff. Um, but you've kind of made that transition, um, interestingly, where, you know, you, you know how to do these like amazing paintings and, and you know how to do things that really get customers and who want to spend some money on art and stuff like that. Uh, yet you're doing something different nowadays. Um, you know, yeah. I'd be curious to hear some more about um, this idea of like, you know, having that, but then now, hey, I'm going to make a comic. And, you know, we all know that makes a lot of money and I'm going to make an animation, you know, that type of thing. Oh, You're yeah. Following your calling in a different way. But I think it's still kind of worthwhile. I'm curious some of your thoughts about that. Well, it's not only kind of worthwhile. I mean, this this almost gets back to what you're talking about, like your calling, because that's that's why I did do the comic. Because, you know, back before all the sketch cards and all that kind of stuff, you know, before the internet, like I, I did work in comics for a little while. I felt like I never did anything that I was really proud of in comics. And I felt like I got my ass kicked back out of the industry. So I just had a chip on my shoulder about that ever my whole life. You know what I mean? I feel like I was, I got to like the, the pro leagues, you know, the, you know, the pro football game and I just never got off the bench. You know what I mean? Mm. And I, and I look back at like so many guys that I know that, you know, became the, the big names and stuff like that. And it just, and it just irritates the fuck out of me. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cuss, but um, okay. that's, that, that was the, the thing with, with the comic, you know, at, at some point I just, I was just like, I, I never did what I wanted to do. I see all these other guys. I watch you guys, you know, I watch you and Kevin and, Scott and everybody else put their comics out online. I listened to all the comic shows. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. I'm in your guys' group. And I'm the only one who, who just never took took a you know another shot at it. And so that that was the real impotence for trying the comic. Um and I feel like I did okay, but I I mean I you know I, I once again didn't really I didn't finish the whole series and stuff. And now I'm off on this crazy idea for animation or whatever. But anyway, it's just, that is like your thing. Like you're saying, like, you know, you're trying to like live up to your calling or do what you want. And I felt like I got to a point online with my money and stuff. And then my, my wife, my wife also went back to work, which eased up the pressure on me. Cause like for all that time, you know, my wife didn't work. Oh. She stayed home and take, took care of Tristan, but now he's kind of old enough. He, he goes to school. And then, you know, she went and got a job. And so now it's like, it's not all on me anymore, you know? Right. And, you know, just from like the commissions that I do and my YouTube money and my Patreon money, as pathetic as all that is, I make enough, you know? So I, I could, I could try something different, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 That's one thing too, as, a, as an encouragement, you know, if anybody's thinking about, um, kind of getting into a career with all this is, um, you know, I notice uh, a lot of times, I think when I was younger trying to think about what it would be like to have a career in what I love, um, I would think, you know, well, I could make comics, but I know that's probably not going to make enough money for me to live. Um, or I could do a YouTube channel, but I know that's it's not going to be enough or, you know, the, all these different things. And um, what I, I didn't think of, you know, back then, and, and I've definitely realized it more now is it's not, you don't make a living off of just one thing. You make a living off of many different things. Um, so yeah, the one things aren't going to do it, but, you know, having some come from YouTube and from comics and from, you know, some prints and from, you know, maybe a little bit of uh, fan art or whatever, it, it will add up to something and you have to kind of create a scenario which that, you know, where a career in art, you know, can be sustainable. Um, yeah, definitely. So, um, 
Yeah, I, I think it's um, it's really exciting um, to kind of see what you're doing with the animation. Uh, I, a lot of times the way with um, with YouTube, I have a lot of people who I follow. I'm really into a lot of people's videos and yours is definitely one of them. But sometimes the videos build up where I'm not able to get to it or I don't even realize that they're up. Um, so that's kind of what happened recently. Uh, with you and then I go over and then I binge watch when I see that oh they, they've been uploading some things so I kind yeah. of did that you know recently and I'm like I was so amazed when I saw one of your latest videos I'm like he's got an animated intro like that is so awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> like I wanted to do that forever <laughs> that's so uh, yeah I know that's the same way I was and uh, I finally tried it and it, it kind of worked yeah so um, and you know, it's it's funny you you mentioned when you were doing that uh, when you're talking about the animation stuff that one of your influences is uh, you know Jim Lujan and yeah. he's been, he's been on my channel he's been on your channel um, and he's I, I love I love his stuff as well and and it's he's like always been another one of those examples to me where it's like you know you can go out and try to make the perfect piece of artwork comic or animation. Or you can just get out there and do it, and and yeah. really, really the common the, the thing that I think separates, um, you know, one creator from another with animation or with comics is your ability to tell a story that's entertaining. Yeah, uh, and man, if <laughs> even though um, you know Jim Lujan's stuff kind of is a little bit a crude style of art. It's, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just, it's meant to be kind of that, that type of style of art, man, does that guy know how to tell a story and be kind of cinematic with it and stuff, you know, <laughs> and be funny too. Yeah. They're, they're totally entertaining. I, I've always watched his stuff like all the way through and I've went back and watched him again. Cause I like him, you know, and yeah, you're right. His stuff is it's not like Jim Lee's artwork that's totally slick and refined and all this stuff, but it's it's like it's good, you know. And I, I agree with you hundred percent, man. It's like that's one thing I've really learned over time is like it really is like stories like King, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean there's you know, even when you look at indie comics and stuff, there's so many like indie guys or from at least back in the past, indie guys that, you know, I just I mean, I'm not impressed by their art, like Chester Brown's one of them. And boy, but I mean, his, his comics, I still got them, you know, it's like, I've lost a lot of comics and just, you know, threw away a lot and stuff like that, but his are still on the shelf because they're so good, you know? So, yeah. I mean, it, it, I don't know. It, it, he is inspiring for sure. And, and his limited style of like animation, I've always, I've always, you know, been inspired by that and, and thought, you know, like, could I work that into like what I'm doing some way? And so, yeah, his style definitely was a huge inspiration for like my little intro thing. And then also with what I'm trying to do now. And, you know, I don't know, hopefully I can make it work as good as he does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I definitely see a lot of um, potential with, with the, I don't know if the, you know, the kind of animation you did in, in the intro and stuff. And I haven't seen the behind stuff on the, behind the scenes stuff on the patreon but i guess we should mention that too is like if you um if you guys want to see exactly what jeff is working on and, and get a little more in depth um i would definitely recommend the patreon um he's i've been subscribed to it at times and um he puts out a lot of cool content there and he's been sharing more of his um animation process um and i just wasn't able to afford it recently but yeah uh, I definitely would recommend that. Can uh, where where can people find you on that Patreon? Is it just Jeff Lafferty or? Yeah, I think it's just patreon.com slash Jeff Lafferty. I believe that's what it is. Cool. Um, I'm sure if you search it. Um, yeah, Patreon's tough. I I still don't know what to think about Patreon. If it's really a, a good thing, it's it's what I find about you know hard about it is it's it's hard to like stay motivated. You know when you got like because I put stuff up there and then you get like 10 people watch it and you're like, Oh man, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 so it's really hard to, to just be on it for those 10 people. I know those 10 people are you know waiting, you know, every day for some new stuff, but you know, part of me, every time I put something up, I'm like, I should just put it on YouTube. Then I could get some more followers or, you know, or more fans or something, you know? So yeah. I don't know. 
it's a really tricky platform and i agree like the idea of it is like it's perfect it sounds great like yes crowdfunding but yeah. But all the time, you know, and but I, I found the same thing trying to do it myself, you know. Um, and I also was very, um, oh, go ahead, sorry. I was also very like, I had a hard time just creating content. It's basically the same thing you said, like, this you know, you create content, but only a few people see it, and and have it just having the time to create content in general and then kind of do a public face and that at the same time when you're just one person it's really tough <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely and, and i remember you were doing yours because i was on yours for a while mm -hmm. and you sent me some mini comics you did and you're just like doing mini comics and sending them out and i gotta admit marshall you know you're talking about you know busting out on your own and stuff and you know i appreciate getting those comics but i was just like man like kickstarter you know that's all i could think about was like yeah. you're putting these things on here you know you could totally run like a small kickstarter yeah. i'm not saying it's going to be small but you know i mean just like ox you know like uh, samurai ox you know he ran all those little little tiny kickstarters and you know a couple thousand bucks every time it's like yeah. you, you could totally do that because you pump out comics just as much as he does you know yeah, yeah, it's definitely um, something I want to get back to. Um, I'm, I'm definitely gonna be doing some more mini comics and stuff. But I will. I feel like the reason why I never did that just yet was um, I wanted to have like a substantial piece of comic thing to kickstart, like an actual right. issue or something, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, and I just haven't gotten to that part of it. But you're, you're right. Like. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm really happy with my output as far as the fact that I have been making comics the last few years. I have been putting out little things here and there, um, which is different than it was, you know, a few years past that, you know, but it's, it's time for me to make that substantial piece, you know, like your first, uh, Berserker, not comic, you know, I, I need to make yeah. that, you know, and then build off of that. Um, well, I'd love to see you do it for sure. And, and I think, you know, it's definitely the next step, I think, mm -hmm. because you're not, you don't seem like you're going to go to work for anybody, <laughs> which is fine. I, I don't think that's such a great thing either, but it's like, if you could do an independent, man, I just think, I think Kickstarter is like how you start making some money, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, totally agree. <clears throat> um, so let's see, I did have a couple notes, but I think I might've kind of gotten to, um, most of them uh but yeah i i just really um think it's it's worthwhile uh to try to explore um moving towards your goal do you have any um i guess advice for people who you know kind of feel this this urge to do do their comic or, or their animation or whatever um but just are feeling like they can't maybe they shouldn't do it or can't do it um you know, for striking out, you know? Yeah. I would say like what I've been thinking lately, cause I've been having a hard time with the animation because it's, it's like, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> you know, so I'm really feeling intimidated. I'm like, God, this thing's gotta be good. I don't know if I can do it, you know? <laughs> and, uh, I just feel like I'm on the verge of total failure all the time. And I'm like, should I just go back to fan art? You know what I mean? I'm always in this sort of like where I want to get out from underneath the vice, but I'm also trying to stay in there because I, you know, it's like where I want to be. I want to, I want to push through and do something. If I can animate this thing, then I want to animate it. If I can't, I want to go back. I want to finish the comics and get it in the comic shops. Like I originally planned. I just want to stay in the space. I don't want to go out of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and so like what I've been trying to do with myself lately is a couple things. One thing is I've been trying like my best not to get into this mode of like, you know, like all the YouTubers, you know, like Doug Tenapel, everybody's always with this, you know, you got to treat it like a job. You got to do 365 pages, of, you know, whatever. You got to eight hours a day, all this stuff, you know. And I've been trying to get away from that because that's like getting me all freaked out, you know. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to think like, why did I do comics in the beginning? You know, I'm trying to think back. And like when I was a kid and I and I would do my comics, I would just draw them for fun, you know. I totally was one of those kids that drew my comic and I had all my friends in it. And, you know, 
even before my friends sort of found out they were in the comic, I was doing this thing and I looked forward to it and I jumped on it. I, I looked forward to it. Like I looked forward to, I don't know, playing Pac-Man back then or something, you know? And so I've been trying to really kind of get my mind on that, uh, that thing of just like, remember what, remember, remember you wanted to do this number one and not, and not, and not put it all, not focus on like, where's the money going to come from? Where's, What's the end game here? What are you going to do when you do this beyond just like putting this on YouTube and going like, okay, there you guys go, you know, and trying to really get my, my mind focused on just like the actual inspiration of like the story and just ignore the rest of that shit, you know? And then, and then the second thing is, is I'm trying to sort of like look back on, you know, like when I, when I busted out of my job and stuff and just be like, and just remember that, you know, and be like, you know, I did that and I could do this. I can, you know, like back then I always felt like I ran for the fences, you know, <laughs> climbed into the barbed wire, ran out of the forest. The lights started shining. The gun started shooting. I just kept fucking going. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I didn't come back when they told me to come back. And that's what I'm trying to do now too, is like, just keep thinking, just keep fucking going. Just keep yeah. going out there. And don't, don't stop. Don't, you know what I mean? Don't go back because it's easier to go back, you know? So I would say that to everybody, you know, like just, I mean, if, if you really want to try it, then, then you got to go for it, you know? And I know that's, I know it's freaking hard and I know it's impossible really. It's like, it's crazy to do it. Yeah. But that's what I would say, like, you know, it's just like, it's just up to you. And, and really all it boils down to is you're just walking away one day and not coming back, you know? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree, and and I think a big part of it is, and you know, I've been pushing with my um, Discord group and everything. This year, we have like this challenge on who can make more comics, which it's not who no, can more. make less comic, it's who can make more comics. And um, you know, I think pushing that publishing part of it, like you got to publish something, you know. Um, yeah. And then you got to publish something else after that. And then after that, you got to publish something else. Like <laughs> that's, I think really the key you, you can't like, if you haven't done that, then you haven't, um, you haven't really moved anything yet, you know? And that's kind of where I, I feel like I am. It's like, I haven't done that substantial, you know, piece of first piece of work, you know, I can't really move and navigate and see where I'm going to be headed if I haven't even, you know, gotten the, the kind of the, the train moving or whatever, you know? And um, mm -hmm. so I, I think, you know, drive and then figure out where you're going to turn before you're like trying to figure it, you know, you, you can spend all day like on MapQuest or GPS or trying to find the best route to whatever destination you want to go to, but eventually you just got to drive, you know, and once you yeah. drive, you can start to figure it out as you go, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's a good analogy right there. You can do it, dude. I, 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 I mean, cause you've done a lot. I mean, it's, you've, I've always been impressed by your output and your, your art is just getting better and better. It's just going to continue to get better. You know, I, I think it's just a, maybe a mental block. And like you said, man, it's like publishing comics. It, it is a, it is a thing where you, you know, you do the next one, you do the next one, you do the next one. All of our heroes did that, you know, John Buscema, Kirby, everybody. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're right. That's, that's comics, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I agree. Um, you know, I think for me, I've done that already in some ways when it comes to YouTube, but you know, the point is to do comics for me, you know, so I gotta, I gotta get the comic thing going. And, and I do agree, like, there's no reason why I'm not, I wouldn't be able to um, kind of do that and build off of that. It's definitely the plan. Um, so, you know, other than that, um, I just would like to say once again, um, you know, thank you for coming on. And, and once again, let everybody know uh, where they can find you. Uh, just my YouTube is the main thing. It's just to search around YouTube because my website's kind of like old and kind of outdated. But mm -hmm. if, I mean, if you want to like, you know, hear me talk or see me draw or stuff like that, YouTube is honestly the, it's like the only social media place that, <laughs> that works for me anymore. So. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Um, I mean, I do some of the other stuff, but it's really YouTube where the bread and butter is plus the discord, the discord has been really cool. Um, but you guys know where to find me, Marsh comics on uh, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok, And you know, you know where we are right now, but like I said, the link for um, Jeff's uh, YouTube is in the um, description. I'm going to try to throw that Patreon link in there too. Uh, you know, for people who are watching this after the fact. Um, and so, so you could definitely check that out. Like you said, you have like a, like a preview there, right? Of the animation. The animatic. The animatic. Oh, sorry. No, the animatic is in the, um, is in the, you know, Patreon right now. Um, some scenes that I've done so far is in there. I mean, there's, there's quite a bit about the animation in there so far. So, if you guys are into that, then that's that is there. Um, I don't. Yeah, I'm, I'll just stop there because I was just gonna like <laughs> go off on this whole thing where I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing Patreon. I might just put it on YouTube, but no, no, I'm gonna stick with Patreon. So go join up. <laughs> well, it's it's, a, it's definitely worth it to um, to go and see that extra stuff. I would say. I mean, I again, I haven't done it, seen it, but um, I've seen other stuff you've put out there, and and I've totally enjoyed the content you've put on there. So I already know it's going to be good. Um, so I definitely recommend that. And other than that, once again, um, thank you everybody for hanging out with us, uh, everybody in the chat and um, everybody watching after the fact as well. Um, thank you. And thank you, Jeff, for coming on. No, it was fun. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, everybody. We will talk to you on the next one. See ya.